Well, that, um, okay, that's actually an interesting point right there. So let me say it back to you and see if I'm understanding it right. So is there low friction to start and just yes. screw around with something? Yes. And then you can kind of keep building the house. From I mean, even from, a, even from an acquisition onboarding stamp pricing model, freemium, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's intentional with the onboarding. I don't have to sit and click like, yes, 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 skip, skip, skip. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It just lets me get in. Mm-hmm. It lets me just pick a template. It's all filled out with demo data. You know what I mean? I get a real, I get, within like minutes, yeah. you can get a feel for it. It's just like we just did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it literally took me two minutes. And you're like, oh. Welcome to The Experience, brought to you by Weave.com, a show that explores what it takes to compete on customer experience and build an online company that can last decades. As always, thanks for being a supporter of the show. So today we're talking about Airtable, which is basically spreadsheets on steroids. (laughs) And the reason why I ch- so the drink that we're having in front of us is the Long Island iced tea, which yeah. may sound like we're about to go party back. hard. Yeah, yeah. party hard. Um, but the reason why I chose it was because it's got a lot of just, um, I guess, simple things, right? Like, so just all the main alcohol you can yeah. think of, plus yeah, a Coke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. But it's surprisingly powerful. Oh, surprisingly. Right? Yeah. So Airtable is the same way. It's, okay. it's this spreadsheet kind of thing. It's really simple. It's on the outside, uh-huh. but behind the scenes, when we start lifting up some of the covers, it's like, this is actually really powerful. Interesting. Okay. And so anyway, this drink um, seemed to fit. All right. Well, cheers. Let's yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's we get try, it. We try to make a fancy one. So let's see how it turned out. This one's very fancy. I mean, Clayton made the drink, so I don't get any credit, but. Well, he chose it. Well, that actually... I'm actually, uh, I can see why you get in trouble with these. I want to see what happens when I put a little bit of lemon in it. Wow, this brings me back. Oh, is it, wait, you're saying it's the same as the ones you had in college? I mean, I'm just saying I haven't had a yeah. long iced tea since Since like forever. What, a week ago, right? I mean, we're going to be blitzed yeah. by the time this show's <laughs> we can over. make sure we talk about the important the stuff. The good thing is, is tomorrow is a it's, holiday. So it yeah, is, yeah, we'll, exactly. We'll, we'll All right, so here, so... Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you, the normal structure just is, we'll, is we basically talk about some context of the company, right? Yep. So maybe you can help us understand... Who yep. Airtable is. Yeah, let me kind of tee them up, uh, the, the company, the founders, and then we can kind of dive into the experience Sweet. of the product. So, um, yeah, so it's essentially Airtable is a productivity tool, collaboration tool. It's, they really, I mean, kind of the earlier terms they use was um, spreadsheets on steroids. Mm-hmm. Um, it's founded in 2012, September 2012. Oh, so it's been around for a, a minute. while. Yeah. Um, is you're actually going to find a lot of interesting things about this team behind this product too. So, um before I dive into that and give you some more details, just like, you know, about the founding or the funding and all that type of stuff, uh, their vision is, I guess, they want to allow people to, I guess, create in your own way using Airtable. So you can kind of, as you get used to using the product, um, it's way more than a spreadsheet. And you can do all types of things. I mean, you could do project management. You have a sales CRM. You can have... And ed- you can run a whole blog editorial in there. You could do um, project planning, hmm. um, project management. Like you can do all kinds of things. So you, what was it you said? You said they want to let people create things in their own way. Yeah. Or, so yeah. They might, so, there's not just one path. Right. And things. so like if you think about a spreadsheet historically or like, uh, yeah, just just it's it's a, basically a bunch of rows and columns. Yeah. And there's some numbers and text. Um, they do that and you start out building kind of that way, but then you can, you can like funnel it out in all these type of views mm. where you can have uh, a grid view, you can have a Kanban view, you mm-hmm. can have a calendar view, you could have, um, even they have a Gantt charts that you can roll it into. Mm-hmm. Um, you can even spit things out into like a form where you could do surveys and then it, all the results, um, from the form roll into your spreadsheet. So you okay. can keep track of everything, just like a CRM kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Crazy. So um founders there's three founders and i found this fascinating but between these two founders i'll i'll get through all three of them so andrew Osted, he is the cpo co-founder and previously he led the redesign of google maps oh jesus he was also the product manager for android so he was at uh, google for a while wait this is before 2012 yeah wow emmett nicholas he's the cto he's the founding engineer at stack overflow so you already got like a powerful team, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the CEO, Howie Liu, Liu I think, uh, CEO, and he previously built a company called Etax. It was a smart, he called it an intelligent CRM. 
And it was acquired, I think it was like 2010. Mm. It, acquired, it was acquired by Salesforce after one year of building it. Wow. There's a lot of other people. It ended up not really, it kind of, they shut it down. But then he had, went on at Salesforce to lead the social product for their flagship CRM. So, mm. um, and then he went on to build, uh, basically. So, so, but, so he, he was kind of doing an original CRM kind of yeah, vibe and yeah. like bringing all this data together. So he's clearly like kind of had the vision around this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sounds like these guys teamed up. So interesting. Um, a couple other tidbits about these guys. Funding. Do you want to take a guess on how much funding these guys have? Well, I have two guesses. One is when they got it and two, how much. I'm guessing they're well-funded. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing that they actually got money early. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, 2013, first okay. seed round. Yeah. They had a bunch of seed rounds. They've had $170 million so far in funding. I had no idea it was that much. Okay. Uh, the last round was in November 2018. They got a $100 million Series C round. Their seed was just in 18? Uh, yeah. And oh, okay. when they got that $100 million, they hit a valuation of $1.1 billion. That's crazy. And it Where's was interesting. So, like, you know, and here's the thing, right? Like, me and you are bootstrappers. So, like, we're kind of like, I mean, VC was whatever. Yeah. But, like, yeah. So, Where, it's cool. But, like, his big thing was, like, you know, Slack, Stuart Butterfield was all about, we wanted to be this unicorn status, which is a billion-dollar company. And so, he talked, he was very open that that's what their goal was. And he said, I, I still believe it's worth way more, but I want to be in that subset of companies i want to be known as a unicorn that was like their big goal you're not referring to to uh, uh, he, he, uh both oh, so both he, okay. he so stewart did that earlier yeah yeah but he mentioned he kind of talked about that and brought up that that was a goal was theirs was to be a billion dollar company so on at least point, worth a billion dollars so two questions real quick so the value just on the business side for a moment on the valuation was that from their their customer they have a massive customer base or i mean obviously it's from it's it's Part of the VC world, right? Like when yeah. you raise that kind of money, it's they put a valuation on. It. I mean, yeah, it could be a lot of things. But, but you're not sure primarily, it's it. primarily it's around the funding amount. And then um, the uh, did they when the CEO of this company said why it was important to be unicorn status? Is that like a stature in the community, or was it something like market share? Kind of like they felt like that was. I think it's more advantage? the former. I think it was just like a oh, just a just, feather. This is me. Yeah, okay, okay. I did it. Gotcha. So, um, and again, I don't know these guys, yeah. but. Um, I don't know. I, it makes me kind of like, yeah, I mean, again, I I guess I'm picking a fight here with him a little bit. Like, I think that I, 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 I'm worried, we're all worried about, like, the world we live in with funding, right? And just having the focus of being more about your user growth and being profitable and cash flow rather than, like, being worth a billion dollars in on paper. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So, I... Anyway, I, who knows? I don't. Again, I don't know them, gotcha. but just from the outside reading it, you're kind of like it. Kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I was so like, I'm curious. Oh. Like before you drive into like what yeah. it feels like to use them on the business side of it, do you happen to know anything about their income or customer base? Was so what I what I read available? when I was reading this article in 2019 when he was talking about this billion dollar uh-huh. valuation, um, they said they had roughly around 80,000 companies using organizations okay. using Airtable. Okay. So that was um, as February 2019. Gotcha. So maybe a little under a year. And just ago. ballpark, their pricing is like kind of. Like it's a uh, yeah, they have a freemium. They have a freemium, and then they have uh, it's user based pricing. So they have two user based pricings. It's ten dollars and twenty dollars a month. There's like a pro and a I can't I just can't remember the name, yeah, but yeah. Um, you get a little more features with them. But it's all user based. So if you have a team and you've got ten guys on it and they're all paying ten bucks, so it's a hundred dollars gotcha. a month okay. for the product. Which is you know I think it's a decent. They got yeah. a decent pricing model. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you can get a lot with just the freemium. You can get a lot yeah. of value out of it. So I know you'll dive this next, but I just want to throw this in your head. So you mentioned like 84 things they're trying to be up front. Yeah. So I'm curious to talk about like, you know, the experience with them and what it was like to, you know, meet them, date them, you, you know, et cetera. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> a drink. Just took another drink and that's um, strong, sorry. I'd be curious like how they're dealing with that, if there's an identity crisis there. Yeah. And also I'd be curious like what space you think they really play in. Well... Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I knew you were going to ask me that because on the outside, when you first get into it, it's, it's a little overwhelming. You're like, well, what, like, what did they do? Yeah. You know, so. But they did a good, pretty good slow burn. I mean, I, mean, I remember um, what they do well, and I'll get into this here in a second, but actually, we'll just dive into it now. What they do really well from an experience standpoint when you first get in as a brand new user to the product. Number one, I mean, their branding is... I like it because I actually took some notes. It's their branding, I think, represents like a new kid on the block kind of feel, and they're playful. Mm-hmm. But you also get this like element of you can trust them. Stability. Yes, and and it's very well polished. Part. In fact, they took two years to build the product before they even 
Oh, really? Um, yeah. Their first funder was that the raise from was Ashton Kutcher, who who oh. put money into Howie's first company. So they, so. they launched in 2014, their first product? Uh, well, I think they launched it in like... I think they finally launched in 2013 or something. I think it feels they, like... I don't remember... Like, they built I, a little bit of a prototype before they got the oh, funding. Because it wouldn't surprise me because I've, I've known an Airtail, but I haven't known them for seven years. Yes. So it feels like... It, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but I do think... Yeah, and I think that's kind of what I was trying to say was I think they've built slowly into this where they kind of came out where they were picking a fight with Google Sheets or Excel. Yeah. yeah. It was like, we're spreadsheets on steroids. There's so much more you can do. And even they say that... I mean, one of the ways that I think they've wrapped this up pretty nicely is it's as straightforward as a spreadsheet with the power of a database. So that's okay, but I just want to kind of keep, push you on yeah. this a little bit. That's cool, but like, what's the market? Do you think like they're like who do you think their primary audience is? Is it people who already do, are trying to replace like a, an application with it, or is it people? Because like, like here's the so, thing that's interesting: it's like a spreadsheet, like Microsoft's like spreadsheet. That product is like forty years old now. I yeah. can't remember how old. And that thing you can't kill it because it, it does everything, right? But like, so is that what they're Howie, doing here? In Howie's words, yeah, like uh, Cliff Notes, I guess, like a. Not really saying this, what he said, but it's kind of the meant, yeah, what he yeah, mentioned yeah. was when I was looking at this problem, he was working at Salesforce in a big corporation. Yeah. And he was watching 90% of people using Excel for everything. And they were organizing all different types of things, not using it for accounting or running formulas mm -hmm. and things like that. They were using it to power a lot of other different things, gotcha. basically organizing data. And so he's, so when you go in and actually use Airtable, you'll understand a little bit better kind of what the what you're getting out of it mm -hmm. and like why it's different but you had to cross that bridge to kind of start yes, appreciating because it. like oh, yeah. and it's just really easy to like create another table or, or sheet over here and then you're pulling stuff into another sheet pretty mm -hmm. easily i know you mm -hmm. can, again i know you can do that in excel but it, more than just text and numbers gotcha. you can pull in drop downs form field like images you can pull in do you think it's fair to say and then even the view it's not just rows and columns yeah. it's the grid view is a amazing the calendar view is amazing the kanban view the and even just like uh, and then uh, i guess one thing i was going to touch on real quick was when you first use the product you log in and there's really not a whole lot of onboarding at this point okay you've created your account you come in and you, you're presented with your workspace so it's your first workspace and you're presented with a couple of their most popular templates they call them and they call their them bases okay so bases in them is like a database but okay and you can start with a template. So the ones that they have is like a project planning one, a sales CRM, an editorial calendar, and like maybe a few others. Mm -hmm. And you can click on them and they'll build out a template and you'll kind of get a feel for like this really kind of nice, so well explore. put. Yeah, and, you're, okay. and you can turn them all on and it, and it feels really lightweight where you can kind of just turn them off and it doesn't really do it. You know what I mean? But you get this really rich experience from the start to kind of yeah. see where you can go. You, with I, it. I, while you're saying, I just want to glance at their site here. So Yep. So I'm curious because as you said that, and I'm looking at the site right now, it says create your way. Um, put, should we go back to the top for a sec, Jay? Yep. Uh, part spreadsheet, part database, and entirely flexible. Teams use Airtable to organize their work their way. So organizing work. Yep. Well, as you describe it, it occurs to me, and from my kind of limited experience with Airtable, do you think they're really trying to, are they trying to solve the problem of like making like business applications? Like are they kind of like a little application maker? And that's like, or is that... Or is it people who really like, I mean, you know what, I, I, I mean, I guess from the lens of, I've I want to like, do a tool some really or... interesting things. I mean, I've seen a lot of people do just even like form stuff, like building forms yeah. and surveys and they're driving it into a spreadsheet and uh, no, the, the reason I like, see, see that yeah. form. So you can see right here, just yeah. the grids, the calendars, the Kanban, the gallery, and then there's like this gotcha. form kind of stuff you can do. Well, I'm sure we'll circle back but, to this at the end, but it's just something that kind of catches my mind is that it's one thing to say, I have a spreadsheet problem and I'm going to go find Airtable because most I versus I have a problem to like, you know, and in your business do X or Y and they're saying, you know, this is the tool to it and it just happens to be. So I'll tell you. So the reason why we started, I started using it uh -huh. was back in the day when we were running our old company. Yeah. And we had a lot of people and we had a whole marketing team we had a, a content team and we had a kind of just a, a blog to run and email newsletters and social media scheduling we needed something we, we looked at co-schedule which is like another way to kind of manage your content i guess mm -hmm. um but for whatever reason Airtable was just we it was a really nice way to run an editorial because here's mm -hmm. why you could load up all of your different types of editorial we had the website content versus blog content versus newsletter so you could create different tabs but then you could also once you had all that ready with dates and everything in the columns 
you could load up a calendar and see it visually about what's going in, what's going out, all in kind of one area. Yeah. Does that make sense? So well, no, Yeah, what you're saying is it's like basically there's like information that's meaningful yeah. and you can like surface that in different yep. contexts that are appropriate. Yep. But I did cut you off a little bit. So you're walking through the experience. So yep. you're talking about the onboarding. So you're getting started with them. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds like their I- identities, like you said, got multifaceted. Yeah. But you so like keep walking me through the experience of actually like using the, like, you know, getting started with that. Yeah. Like, so again, product. like when you come in, it's, 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 um, you know, I think that's very, they're probably very particular. I mean, they could probably do a better job of not showing you so much to start mm-hmm. and letting you go through maybe a, getting maybe a template launched and like, you know, what, it, for example, when you log in, you just land on a more of a dashboard and you have to see like six or seven templates and there's a sidebar with a bunch of navigation and yeah. you don't really know where to start where you could kind of come in and say, what are you, what is your role? Like if I'm a sales guy, if I'm an accountant, if I'm in the accounting team, if I'm the marketing team, if I'm a, if I'm a content team, you could kind of pick the template for them and then kind of steer them in. Well, that's what's standing out to me as you describe it is I would think that's one of the challenges of having a tool that's really flexible. Like you're describing is you have to give someone an understanding of what the, what the relationship is with it. Right. So if you, this is a little presumptuous because it's been a little while since I've used yep. it, but tell me if this would be correct. Like you're saying like, if I came in here and I kind of asked you like what you're trying to achieve with it, then I could tee up for you the right kind of pieces of that that would make be the most valuable, right? Like how yeah. to input data in the most appropriate way, how to surface it. Yes. Okay. I mean, I guess in a way you could, I, I caution when you ask me if this could build a full blown application. I, cause when, or I'm, like business, like internal business, internal. Yes, tools. yes. I think you could. Yes, I think you'd get away with something something small. I mean, I'd love to hear but, your take. I mean, again, I'm sure after you say everything, I'd love to circle back to this idea. But I, that's the thing that strikes me immediately is, yeah, it feels a little. I'm confused. I'm a little confused on who they're marketing to. But 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 nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, keep, like, so just to give you a feel, right? So yeah. here's like, so we're on their site right now. We're looking at their templates, mm-hmm. so you can see all the different categories that they have. For, yeah. I mean, there's a lot, right? Yeah. So maybe pick one that you like. You want to see. Let's go back to digital video production. Let's go back to my old life. Where's that one? The red one on the top. Oh, right here? Oh, was it red tile in the middle? The big oh, red, my bad. The red okay. one that looks like it's red. So yeah, I can click on this. I can use this template. Oh. Gotcha. Oh, that's okay. Let me go back. Oh, I got it right here. Because uh, I want you to see this because I want right. you to understand I'm gonna this. Describe it, I'm going to describe it really in detail for all yes. of our audio listeners. So Jay's, Jay's scrolling the page. We've reached a big tile that says digital video production. There's appropriately a camera on it. <laughs> Um, a, a somewhat obnoxious little chat bubble just popped up, but now so we're I'm using the template. It. So right. see, this is kind of what. So this is your first screen. So, so, we're so your, describing uh, the screen. This space. is when you first okay. log into Airtable. Okay. There's navigation on the left, and there's right. a bunch of tiles to access. But again, are those all your individual bases? Yeah, but projects? these are the ones that are by default that they show you. Oh, okay. right. I didn't okay. pick any of these yet. So that's what I'm saying. Those are the it's templates. really hard to know where to start. So let's I just see. go into this template I just picked, which is digital video production. Okay. And they have pre-populated it with data. Yes. That's kind of cool. Okay. So, so you've got a video tracker. I mean, you've got your whole staff thing. You've got agencies you're working with. Scores. So that's interesting. So so once you can kind of actually establish intent of what you care about, you get into a template. The templates are pretty rich, and they show data, and like it shows how you could work with that data. Oh, and then did you just switch the view over to a Kanban in that data? So depending on what you can do, so yeah. you've got different views of this data that you can look at it differently. Mm-hmm. So it pulls the columns and shows it in different ways. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's very internal kind of, yeah, just organizational tool. Okay. So it's just, um, I guess you could say it's even competing a little bit with like Asana and Basecamp and spreadsheets and Trello Trello and (laughs) Salesforce. You know what I mean? It's kind of just picking a fight with everyone. And I think it's one of those things where I think they've done a good job with a good enough job with the product where it's powerful enough and easy enough to use where, again, the way I found out about it was not from Mark. If, if they came to me and said, spreadsheet for steroids, you know what I mean? I'd be yeah. like, all right, whatever. But I was referred to it. Someone gave me a recommendation, and I think that's where they're getting a lot of it, where even even the adoption we've used in the companies we work in, it's, it's like been, the Slack. It's been sort of, driven. Yes, it's been driven yeah. by one of us saying or me saying, "Hey, I use this before." So we someone that again. makes it. So it's like a, it's a team kind of growth. Someone yes. spearheads it and they love yes. it, so they kind of get the company pregnant with this tool, and then yes. everyone's using it. Exactly. So, okay, so you're, but you said was that you weren't brought in by a team? Someone told you about it. Do you remember what they told you about that? The yeah. Your so, um, so again, it was our content manager. Okay. At our old company. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that he was the one that was saying, "I'm we've got I've got this whole team of and I've got all these pieces of content I need to take care of the blog, mm-hmm. the site, social, okay, 
PR releases. Gotcha. I need to manage this better. I need because I was probably driving him nuts, saying, "Hey, yeah. what, what are we doing? What are we doing today? What are we doing this week? Got to make sure this is ready to go." And so I could just see a particular view of everything on a calendar, yeah, where he could manage his team through more of the nitty gritty. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So as you're talking, st- tell me if you want to go to a different point, but I'm curious. Like you're talking about the use of the product, right? Yep. Is there anything else that's kind of really interesting in terms of using it day to day? That's either fan- like really helps you love it or, or drives you nuts, like. Like what about that experience of the use is really interesting what they're doing um, beyond what Yeah, I will say it takes some spin up. Okay. So like it's it's pretty foreign and like some of the ideas are different and they're out there and they're new. Okay. So it takes a second to get used to. Um, but it feels snappy. Mm-hmm. It feels seamless. It feels I feel like I'm not I don't have that feeling where if I build this, I I, I guess what I'm sorry, let me say it differently. I feel like I can always extend where I what I've built. With a, with a sheet. It's malleable. You can keep yes, working on I can, it. Yes, okay. and I can keep, and all of a sudden, like three weeks in, you know, I mean, you kind of built this pretty yeah. neat thing. So, Well, that, um, okay, that's actually an interesting point right there. So let me say it back to you and see if I'm understanding it right. So is there low friction to start and just yes. screw around with something? Yes. And then you can kind of keep building the house. I mean, even from, a, even from an acquisition onboarding stamp pricing model, freemium, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe that's intentional with the onboarding. I don't have to sit and click like, yes, 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 skip, skip, skip. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It just lets me get in. Mm-hmm. It lets me just pick a template. It's all filled out with demo data. You know what I mean? I get a real, I get, within like minutes, Yeah, you can get a feel for, it's just like we just did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. literally took me two minutes and you're like, oh, okay. But, it's, but again, to, to your point, it sounds like there might be a slight gap in between you deciding which part of that thing is Yeah, again, like, because now that they've expanded more into more verticals, yeah. it's, Interesting. But it's not that hard to wrap your head around once you kind of get yeah. into it. I mean, you can pick, you, you saw, you can pick your category or the business or the profession you're in, mm-hmm. and you kind of got all the templates that are available. Okay, to, that makes so. sense. Um, have you had have you had any problems they've had to help you with, like support? Like, how's the support experience been? I was, you know, it's a good question. Um, I thought I did, but I think I'm mixing it with another product. <laughs> um, but no, I did. So on that note, I did do, I did look around. So they have a whole help section, which is. Um, they have awesome help documentation. Oh, just really well. Yeah, so you click help. It's a drop down. It's super slick. You uh-huh. got help documentation. Um, you can contact them. You can chat with them. So they definitely are like accessible and mm-hmm. even. But the chat, you know, it starts off obviously as like a chat bot, and then you kind of got to get someone. But it's um, yeah, they're definitely trying. And I will say this: this is one thing that like, especially building Weave, where we're like a, a churn and retention software, where we kind of keep customers sticking around for people mm-hmm. with SaaS products. We haven't really dove into that with a lot of these products we've been unpacking. Oh, lens, but yeah, this, yeah. I did do that with Airtable, and I will give them some credit here. Which oh, I love to, seeing. To their offboarding is very slick, and it's, oh. it's just, um, it's nothing rocket science, but it's not hard to find. You okay. go into our account, scroll to the bottom, and it, even if you have a free account, so the doors, even if you have a free inside, account, it's yeah. delete it. Like, I don't want you guys to have any of your information, just delete my whole thing. And you then if you have a paid account, the downgrade thing, just like, I want to down, I want to cancel. And then it's just like, you know, yeah. all it really says is, you know, when you do this, you're going to delete everything just, just so you know. Yeah. So see you later. Um, That's a good call But there's out. not a lot of friction and it, you know, it just feels free. You feel well, so free using you, the product. You, you feel in control. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, we should definitely look Which at Which I more. guess they should. I mean, it's got to be. It's actually kind of crazy. I'd love to. I did a little research on the revenue. It seemed like I mean, you never know. You said eight thousand I mean, customers. And yeah, average I mean, price is like or organizations. So. I don't know. It's probably twenty million is kind of what I guessed in terms of oh, ARR. Right. Okay. I don't know. I could be low. It could be high. Their biggest competitor that I saw was Smart Tracker oh, or Smart Sheet. Smart Sheet. Oh, there's a few others that come to mind. Like Notion Sm- even comes to mind. Smart Sheet, by the way, yeah. is a public company. And they're two or three hundred million dollars in revenue. Yeah, so heard yeah, so it's uh, I know right. <laughs> so there's definitely a little pocket growing yeah. here, but though they were kind of some of the look like the original. Have you, no, so another question for you: Have you where are they investing? Have you noticed any changes in this product over the years you've been using it? Yes. So they're investing in just expanding verticals. So like one of their latest features. Templates? Yeah, kind of. Yes. That's yes. T- templates also verticals. So for example. Um, their latest role release in like a template was a Gantt chart view. Okay. So I don't know if that's really a template. Well, that's like but across all of them. That's yeah, a, it's like a, a whole nother, oh, it's a whole nother data, view. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, I mean, I, you just saw me change from like a Kanban to a grid view to a, to a calendar view to a, yeah, I mean, a here, here's, here's what so, I think yeah. I've heard so far. And 
and I haven't used Airtable a lot, but you basically have an online store of data. So that means that it's already collaborative by, by nature, right? Or it is collaborative. So many people can touch it. And then the thing that seems like the real secret sauce is they're giving a multitude of ways to take that same data set and to present different facets yeah. and views of it yep. and ways of organizing and surfacing the data. Yep. And so every time they add a view, that's ex it's like exponential across the board. So one thing like, so just moving, I guess just I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the experience I wanted to touch on, but I guess if yeah. I'm listening to this show and like looking at Airtable and thinking about it, like I'm building a product that's, because this is how I would kind of classify Airtable is they took on a big problem. And they kind of have a bigger problem now they have to figure out, which is they're kind of being everything for everyone. I think there's two problems. Slippery like, slope, yeah, yeah. right? And so one thing I just should have done meta research on is just how they're positioning themselves in the market and acquiring new customers. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do a lot of research on that. And it'd be I, interesting to see. Maybe they're just yeah. really niching down the verticals and like showing the specific templates and trying to get people that would into be... that way. But... That would be really interesting because the two things that strike me on it is one is they have the classic problem of people are satisfied with a tool that may not do everything this can do, but it does most of what they need. Well, so they're free. Well, uh, Excel is not, I guess, but yeah. Well, I'm just saying Sheets in general, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like a spreadsheet, and that's like everyone's fought against a spreadsheet over the last 30 years, and yeah. a spreadsheet keeps doing what it can do. So that's one challenge. Like even though this is amazing, like you've got to pull a lot of, you've got to break a lot of like inertia to get someone there. Yeah. The other one though is, man, like, being everything to everyone makes you like very like not super interesting to everyone. You know what I, I mean? Know. So I'd be curious on your marketing front. Well, you're like, not really great at something. You're just kind of good at everything. You're just not understandable either. Yeah. Like that's one of my like I ha I'll give you a good personal example. Well, even right now I feel like I, you're having a tough time wrapping your head around it. Well, no, I've, and I've touched. No, your, no, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I've used your table a little bit, but in my mind, like it has to solve some need, right? Yeah. So when it can do the need that it sits, it's traditionally sat in my mind with like if I ever need like a random online database. I might consider Airtable. And I've thought of it for other purposes of data that connects to other things we build, like prototypes and that. But how often does that need cross my mind? If instead I, the need was like, when I actually need to actually have a team collaborate and touch and create data and actually let that data be consumed in the ways that are meaningful to each of those team members that still work from a unified set of information, which is what you just described to me, that's like that opens up a lot of doors in my mind. And so, Yeah, but I think you're approaching it, and it could be wrong. I think you're approaching it more from like a, your product design kind of, or, 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 or I'm thinking like the marketing, I guess, of it though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, I'm just saying like our, even like our backgrounds, right? Like yeah. how our skill, like what are we really great at? You know what well, I mean? Let me put it in the terms you said. Go ahead. And yeah, because I was just saying like from a marketing standpoint, editorial, like all that stuff, the sell CRMs, the editorial piece, the calendaring, like. 100%. I hadn't found, I have not found anything like that. And that's that. exactly the point I'm making. Yeah. So if I go back to their, there. So what you described makes perfect sense. It feels like, if we, let's go back to the relationship thing, right? You found this, like, you, you're you looking for someone to come, you know, and do this certain, you know, like, I really need someone that can come and, like, yeah. I'm trying to think of a good metaphor that's not bad. These people can really walk the dog and I can rely yeah. on them, right? And this person says, oh, I can, uh, I sometimes walk the dog. I sometimes wash the dishes. I can shovel the lawn. I, I also, uh, I do drapes and I, I, I make clothes. And it's like, okay. So yeah. like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. had they, had they no, said yeah. to you, like, I'm a really fantastic dog walker. Like, so that's the thing I'm it, like, yeah. I, I be, no, that awesome. first part of that relationship until you get in it and really appreciate the power yes. of it. Yes. And I'm, yes, I'm spe Yeah, exactly. And I, here's the other thing too. I am not, I use Airtable. I do not have a paid plan. I'm not mm. a hardcore Airtable user. So you've got enough value out of it. So, but plan. I have, yeah. So like, maybe they have some. Maybe they've really hit their mark on like a certain subset of people. I or don't organizations. understand. Yeah, yeah, like that are just really loving it, and they're just. And maybe they have a more bigger, like a bigger vision, or you know what I mean. Yeah. But but I do think that me and you are around a lot of tools. We're in the space. We're pretty smart guys, and yeah, it's it's you're kind of like. This goes against some, but here's the other thing too. It's some takeaway stuff. You're listening to this show and like building a product. One is I definitely think you should caution being too much for too many people. Cause I think the focus isn't there. And like you said, it's just like, what are you really good at? Great at. Mm -hmm. And two, they've had some, they, the, I brought up the team originally, just like their past and who they mm -hmm. are, because mm -hmm. I will, I, I, I have a belief this is an assumption that they're getting a lot of this funding because of who they are and where they've been and what they pedigree. Been. Yes. Yeah. And with that amount of money sitting in your bank account, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. 
I don't know how much they're worried about, you know, appealing to any, like making money, getting profitable. You Maybe, know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just all about, we got to get on everybody we can and we'll figure oh. it out. You know what I mean? And I just think that that's, so, I mean, if that's the kind of company that you want to build more power to you, right? If you, and I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway I have from this product It's not so much about the product's great. They spent two years, just like, like we, we did another show, superhuman, the email client, mm-hmm. they spent two years before they launched the product. Mm-hmm. These guys have clearly built a great product. Mm-hmm. It's snappy. It's quick. I've never had an issue with it. Um, they have a great fan, but I guess even, and I started off the show with the founder wanting to hit that billion dollar status, just like you said, have a feather in his hat. Mm-hmm. I just get the sense a little bit that these guys are drinking a lot of the Silicon Valley Kool-Aid mm. and they, they got all the funding. Um, they've got some great backgrounds. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and so it's just, uh, well, if you, I mean, so two thoughts. So one to whom I see, it sounds like you'd like it. You'd recommend it, but to, who would you recommend this to? Yeah. This, this like yep. a certain type of person or. Yeah, I think, um, I think people more on the business side, the marketing side of, a, of an organization. Uh-huh. Um, this probably makes a ton of sense. Uh, I could see it from a product perspective and just like from a project management sprint planning, Good you kind of get away with this for a free tool that's, you know, plus you could have, what's nice is you could have your whole team in here. So yeah. uh, maybe your, your marketing team or whoever else is your product team is doing a bunch of, you know, product partization and sprint, you know, kind of getting the shape. They're shaping up the next round of work. Yeah. And then the dev teams maybe running their Kanban view in there or their agile view. I don't know with Trello, you know, Trello kind of vibe. So you could kind of get away with it, I guess. Sounds like but you, could, you could grow with it too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yes. I would I would and I I don't want to talk bad about funding. I just It's and, a different set of pressures. Yeah, yeah, it's just I don't know. I just feel like they're just yeah, I mean, and here's the thing too. Like, you're putting a lot of stuff into a company, a lot of private information, a lot of interesting information, a lot of mm-hmm. processes. You know what I mean? Like, think about that for a second. Let me just break down just an editorial of a whole marketing team that we have. That's that's someone like me at the time that was running the company as a CEO. That's a whole marketing team. You know, basically, mm-hmm. like you said, getting pregnant with the product. Right? Mm-hmm. They're all starting to use it. They're all adopting the product. And with that amount of funding and that amount of pressure and that amount of how big can we get this? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they end up doing with the product or, yeah. but I will say they do, they have slapped on. It's not like, here's the one thing I will say in their defense, very smart group of guys, Mm -hmm. very talented group. Awesome. And they have some really smart investors and they do have a, Pay, they do have a business model that seems to be working. They and are people charted, are yeah, paying. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like they're just living in like la la land. Yeah. So, um, but I think the biggest thing was just, I don't love the fact that they're trying to be everyone for everything right now. I would agree. Yeah. I mean, so if, if, you, if they're in the room to chat with them, like anything you'd like ask or tell? Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to know like what, just like that big grandiose vision is that they're trying to shoot for. Yeah. Like where are they trying to go in the next uh-huh. five years, three years, two, whatever. Um, just from a, from a pure business perspective, are they trying to sell this thing, trying to go public? Are they trying to, you know, just get a clear sense of the priorities? Yeah. Like yeah. what are you guys trying to do with yeah. this thing? I would love to know that. Um, again, just back to those reasons where I'm going to, if I'm going to adopt my entire organization yeah. onto this product, I want to make sure I'm putting my, you know what I mean? It's kind of a specific question, but you mentioned offboarding earlier and that they do a yep. good job of like making you feel yeah. in control. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, products like this, I think a big challenge for them is exactly what you brought up of the risk of an investment that suddenly if they get purchased or they got a business or whatever, right? So increasingly you'll see companies that really like, not only are they doing grid offboarding, but they give you a mechanism for getting out. Yeah. So you have a way of exporting your data, for example, and yep. things like this. Do these guys do that? Have you noticed or? I think so. Okay. I think so. I, I could be wrong, but I'm, I'd almost certain. Gotcha. Um, so they, they're but like, I don't, I can't answer that. I but but it sounds like you always felt in control of what you've had there. Yeah. Right. So, but I do think that these guys are definitely more like, I would, again, I, sorry, I keep talking about the funny thing, but just like, I feel like it's like a slack thing where mm-hmm. I think they do want to kind of grow this thing, hang on and gotcha. Get it as big as they can. Yeah. So, oh, cool. but I mean, they've done, they've done a great job. Yeah. So I think the big, so yeah, takeaways, um, I definitely recommend to a friend. They're in the room. 
get a little bit more clarity on what they're doing or just like uh, yeah specificity to yes. certain audiences right yes i do think people could take something away from their pricing strategy i think it's, they've done a really good job what do you mean there with it. just just i like their approach i like because they know that they're working with organizations uh-huh. they're using that per user mm-hmm. seat model there's a lot of expansion revenue in that that you can get to grow your company and be profitable and all that yeah and um I did a good job with the freemium to get enough value out of it where you kind of stick around for a while. I mean, I've been using it for a couple well, of years now. You, you get enough almost like uh, invested, like you have enough skin in exactly. the game that once the, you need to pay, like you're not really There's definitely to been a few, fe- there yeah. was a few features that um, on one particular company where, yeah, we mm-hmm. were like, all right, we just need to, we just and, need so, to bump to a pay know, plan. So I guess one last question before we wrap up. That's interesting. So you're getting enough value out of them, right? Yeah. From a business perspective, you want someone to have skin in the game and then yep. they're going to be willing to pay. But from a user perspective, <laughs> yeah. you're getting a lot of value out of it and you suddenly had to pay. Yep. So how do you feel about it? Did you feel like, oh, cool. No, I, I felt actually, good. I felt, felt great. Good. Yeah, I okay. felt good. All right. So, nice. yeah. Well, thanks for bringing Airtable, man. Yeah. Hopefully that was... That was super interesting. Yeah. I, I just am blown away by the amount of funding, though. I'm blown away about this drink. I'm already feeling a little tipsy from halfway through Holy, it. Holy, yeah. I dude, think it's like too. the mixing of the different alcohols or something because I'm not. I wouldn't say tipsy, but I feel the drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can, uh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. So, All yeah, right. as always, you came for the experience. Stay for the drink. As always, Clayton is your little bartender whipping everything up, all the bar- goodness. <laughs> yeah. He's a solid bartender. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, stay around, yeah. watch the episode, watch the, uh, the recipe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. The experience is brought to you by Weave.com, the innovative tool that is helping SaaS companies automate their customer retention. As always, thanks for being a supporter of the show. You've had the experience. Now stay for the drink. Okay. (laughs) Today's exciting. We're making a drink full of bad choices, but we're going to make it well. (laughs) So we're going to make a Long Island iced tea, which is essentially like someone... (laughs) <laughs> it's almost like a joke, like four different alcohols walk into a bar and the only thing that's left isn't your dignity. So, <laughs> all right, so this drink <laughs> doesn't make any sense, but it's a favorite. And we're going to make a better version of it, a slightly better version of it, by using some good ingredients and some of the little touches. So, we will put in three quarter ounce, oh, do you want to see what's in here? Yeah. So I'm sorry, I didn't mention all the... the, the yeah, what do we got I, going? I what do we work with? All the people got on the what's bench this first this one? team. This is a rum. Okay. So we got a white rum, a silver tequila. Okay. It's like it's almost like the United Nations of drinks. <laughs> you have a, uh, a vodka, good vodka. Okay. Uh, gin, and then we're gonna um, you know we're put a cola in it, uh, Coca Cola, and then we're gonna put a little bit of a maro. So maro is a uh, essentially like an Italian um, uh, kind of liqueur of sorts. So and then we'll have some simple syrup and some lemon. So. First off, we're going to do uh, our lemon juice. So we need three quarter ounce of lemon juice per drink. We're making two of these bad boys. So we'll get one. Do we have any more left in him? And this should get us the other three quarter that we need. Just like cooking. Oops, I actually put a little bit too much in that. Let me kill a little bit of that over here for a second. All right, so just like cooking, like, honestly, the whole reason you use like a jigger in that is just to actually measure stuff. Like a little bit of too much of this, a little too little of that could change the drink quite a bit. All right, so we got three quarter uh, ounce per drink of lemon juice. We're gonna do the same for simple syrup. I heard a good uh, w- explanation for simple syrup reason. It's kind of like butter in cooking. So it should kind of help kind of bring out the other flavors. It fattens it up a little bit in terms of the mouthfeel. A clear simple syrup like this is a real neutral kind of butter. Um, and what else? We've got, okay, so now we're onto our booze. All right, so we've got our simple uh, sugar in there and we've got our lemon. So now let's work down the, uh, let's work down the plank. So we're going to do a half an ounce of each of these four main liquors. I'm doubling up, so I'll pour in a full ounce for each of these. Rum. Tequila. You know what this reminds me of? A bad I mean, I've had Long Islands, like, when I was in college, but, like, 
no one took the care of it. <laughs> yeah, like, I just, it reminds me of like being a kid and you go up to the fountain soda machine oh, yeah. and you oh, just it's pour, a it's a suicide. It's or you just, suicide. you just pour every soda in and it tastes you know like what? absolute. And all of a sudden you've made millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, college sophomore co-eds everywhere are super excited about you minute. The, um, so what is the difference? So you said this one's a little bit different than the, our traditional Long yeah, Island. So What's the one, difference? One difference is, you know, like anything, right? You use the better booze you use, the better results you're going to get. You can find some recipes that get really kind of fancy with this with a lot of homemade ingredients. This one's still following a pretty close to the straight recipe. Um, and then I would say the main difference is we're going to put a little bit of this tomorrow in. And this will pull out some of the cola, and kind of, like, almost gives a tiny bit of another dimension to the cola flavor. There's not much of it actually. We're just going to put in like a couple, bar, like one bar spoon of this. Oh, okay, drink. gotcha. So, you'll find a lot of recipes where just adding a little thing, like some drinks will add just a tiny bit of absinthe or the tiny bit of salt. You don't taste it, but it just does stuff to the other flavors. Okay. All right. So, if memory serves me. We've got everything in here, except so, for the coke. The coke will go in in a moment. So normally when you have carbonated stuff like sodas and that, you won't normally shake yeah, those. Yeah, put them in at the end. Yeah. Yep. You really just top it off with the soda, right? Exactly. And this yeah. drink in particular, the, the coke goes on top. Okay. All right, so we're some ice in here. Get us ready. I'm also a fan of just like the right glasses for the right drink. So this is always normally served in like these tall glasses are called Collins. And those are good to go. And then we'll get our ice in here. I'm just about a thousand. Alright. Take about 10 seconds. A lot of bad choices gonna happen. <laughs> hey, we might have just found the way to make a delicious choice. <laughs> I hope so. All right, we'll grab our cola, Coca-Cola. It's actually the uh, kind with the real sugar in it, as opposed to the fake sugar, I guess. Where's the? Here's the one part of the drink I can't do apparently is open a bottle. <laughs> What's going on here? Here we go. All right. And this drink is usually served with a wedge of lemon. And when you usually serve a garnish like this on a drink, it just lets the, uh, lets the drinker kind of further adjust the drink as they want. So in this case, they can choose to use this or bail on it altogether. All right, just like your mother makes at home, Long Island iced tea. <laughs>